In this video, I will discuss the concept of fixed point representation of numbers. A fixed point number is simply a representation of floating point numbers as integers with an implicit scaling factor which is sometimes also referred to as the resolution. Uh, to kind of motivate the idea behind this, I'm going to take a slight uh, look ahead into uh, lab 8. Uh, and this will also show you why you're doing certain things in lab 7. In lab 8, the big picture uh, of lab 8 is we have our microcontroller which is being, which is interfaced to a slide pot. A slide pot is going to be used, uh, the slide potentiometer um, is, uh, think of this as a slide which has, uh, uh, which has markings on it of from 0 to 2 centimeters. So there's our one centimeter right there. And let's say our marker is currently at some point here. Right. So what, what will happen eventually in lab eight is you will read this number. So this value, let's say, is at, uh, for us, it happens to be at 1.725, right? So what what we will do is we will we will display this information onto an lcd this is our lcd display so this is what lab 7 is all about writing this interface between the microcontroller and the lcd so what we should see on the on the lcd is a number that says 1.725 centimeters now herein lies the catch now it turns out that our microcontroller, as we said, has a floating point unit, but using it is can be expensive in terms of power and uh, power consumption. So we disable it. So how can we get this notion of floating point numbers without using floating points? So uh, the, the simple answer to that is, what if I didn't represent this number internally at, as 1.725, but internally this number is represented as an integer, let's use, as an integer, which is 1725. But when I have to display it, I'm going to display, I am going to make a note that there is an, a decimal point, in other words, my delta in this case, is 0 0.001, which is a 10 to the minus 3. So this i is has an implicit factor of 10 to the power, power of minus 3 in it. So when I display it, I'm going to display it as 1.725, uh, though I'm internally storing it as 1725. So let's uh, let's take a couple of other examples. For example, if this this pointer were at a different point, let's say it was at a point here, which is a point, let's say three seven five, then zero point three seven five. Then the integer value I will store internally will be a uh, uh, three seventy five, and when I display it, I'll be displaying it as zero point three seven. Five centimeters okay so that's the idea so how do we do this well as as I already alluded alluded here uh, when when we when our numbers are uh, uh, the numbers we are representing uh, have uh, have a known range so for example uh, so we if we if we know the range range of values we are representing. Uh, in this case, it happens to be between 0 and 1, 1.999 centimeters, let's say. Then we can, uh, we can decide it to use a fixed point number. And in this particular example, our delta is going to be 0 0.001. 
Uh, there are other situations, for example, your voltmeter. Uh, you might have a voltmeter uh, and maybe your, your voltmeter, you set your setting in your voltmeter to be uh, a delta of 0 0.01, which means that it's only going to show you values. So if you have values that go from 0 to 5 volts, uh, it's only going to show you values between 0 uh, to 4.99. Um, and internally, if it's if it's doing all of its math in so 0.00 to 0.9, internally, if it's doing doing representation, is it, if this might not be a voltmeter, might not do calculations. But if there were any calculations that you do, you can't get a resolution of lower than 0 0.01. So you can't get a value which is which falls in uh, in the sub 1000th range. You can get. Uh, in up to a resolution of 100 so that's the idea so let's take a look at how fixed point numbers are actually implemented we represent our value as an integer times a resolution if the delta which is a resolution we said that this is the resolution of the scaling factor and we we can say that this is the smallest fraction one can represent using this representation. So this delta sometimes can be expressed as a decimal. So if we have a decimal fixed point, in decimal fixed point, this delta is typically a 10 to the sum value minus m uh, and we we think of it as minus m because we're thinking of them as fractions so so if for example um, m were equal to 3 then our delta is 1000th and that's the smallest smallest fraction we can represent is 0 0.001. Um, if, if, for example, like we said, if we, if we have a, a scientific experiment that we are doing and we want a really high resolution, then we might set an M value of 5, uh, where delta is, is 0 0.0001 now, right? So... So that's, that's a decimal fixed point. But we can also have binary fixed point. And the idea behind binary fixed point will become clear to you in just a second. Uh, but the delta here is a power of 2, a 2 to the minus m. Um, and the example I'm going to take in just a second is an m value of 8, which means that our uh, our uh, delta is 1 over 256th. So let's try and understand um, these uh, together by, uh, by, first, um, by first taking a simple example. And I'll tell you why one might be preferred over the other in just a second, what the benefits of decimal versus binary are. The example I'm going to take is, uh, let's, let's say we want to represent that uh, that number that famous number pi um, 3.14159 and I'm going to stop there um, so let's say that's the number you want to represent uh, let's do it in decimal fixed point in decimal fixed point uh, it's going to be represented so we want to represent this value so that's the value so we can write this i to be equal to the value divided by delta. In this case, the value is 3.14159 divided by delta, which is 10 to the minus m, let's say, uh, 10 to the minus 3, let's use a delta value of 10 to the minus 3 in this case, which means that this is gonna be represented as 3.14159 times 1000, which is 3.141.59 and we'll round it to the nearest integer. So that, that's gonna be rounded as three, one, four, two. So let's, let's do the same thing with our 
binary fixed point again our i here is 3.14159 divided by 2 to the power of minus 8 which means it's 3.14159 times 256 uh, so let's go ahead and do uh, do the math um, so that's uh, 3.14159 I'm just gonna stop there times 256 and that's 804.24 so 804.24 something so I'm gonna approximate it as 804.8 approximate it as 804 in fact it, it's not internally going to be represented that way in fact it'll be represented internally let's do a uh, programmer so that's an decimal value of 804 which means in internally in binary it's going to be represented as uh, 3 2 4 uh, I'm writing it in hex as 0 as 3 2 4 or in binary that's uh, in binary that's uh, 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 so that's what it would be internally represented as so let's see why we would prefer binary so the advantage of binary binary fixed point is that it is computer friendly well what we mean by computer friendly is we can we can do fast computation if we represent it natively as, as binary. For example, if I were multiplying this number, uh, let's take a simple example. Let's say I was multiplying this number by a four, this number by a four. So multiplying by four is pretty straightforward with binary fixed point because it's simply shift two places right uh, so you just shift it two places you get two zeros and you're done whereas multiplying here by four requires an actual arithmetic so whether you do successive addition or you have a multiplier a ripple carry adders whatnot whatever circuit you have you need to use something like that so while it's while while uh, decimal fixed point is human friendly binary fixed point is 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 computer friendly and so we will use the human friendly version in lab 7 and 8 but uh, there will be good reasons to use uh, decimal binary fixed point in in some other situations where where speed is of essence